Hey guys, this is MathCamp321 presenting your first lesson from your geometry book, Geometry for Enjoyment and Challenge. And what we're going to do today is go through six very basic definitions that you're going to need to know for the rest of this course. So as I go through these six definitions, I'd like you to write these down so that tomorrow in class we can go ahead and uh, put these into practice. So the first term that we're going to look at today is called a point. And a point we're going to define to be a location in space. Points are denoted with a dot and are labeled with a capital letter. I'm going to go ahead and give an example of three points. Here are the points T, H, and S. Our second term is line. Now a line is a collection of infinitely many points in a straight path that extend infinitely in opposite directions. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw an example of a line. And to show that it extends infinitely in opposite directions, I'm going to put arrowheads on either side of this line. And while a line is made up of infinitely many points, I'm just going to identify three of them. And I'm going to call these points T, R, and Y. I'm also going to put next to one of the arrowheads a script letter M. Now, to name a line, there's a couple ways you could do it. If there is a script letter, you can identify the line by that script letter. So you could identify this line as line M. But if there's no script letter, then what you're going to need to do is take any two points on the line and write them down with a special symbol above it. And that special symbol is a little miniature line. So we could take any two points on this line. I'll start with TR and I'll put this special notation above it. Now I can reverse these letters and say line RT. Now I could have picked two other points on the line. It didn't have to be T and R. I could use line RY. And I could reverse those letters and say line YR. There's one more set that I could have picked. You may have guessed TY, line TY, and reversing those letters, line YT. So these are the acceptable ways to name this line. A common mistake that I see students make is to name a line with three capital letters, and this is bad. Our third term is line segment. A line segment is a portion of a line that is finite in length. There's a definite start point and a definite end point. I'm now going to draw an example of a line segment. I'm going to put the two end points on the segment, the start point and the end point, and I'm going to call this segment CD. And for fun, I'll just put a third letter on here, identifying another point on this segment, and I'll call this E. Now, to name a line segment, you use the two endpoints, but it doesn't matter the order that you say. So I could call this line segment CD with the special notation of the little bar on top, this time without the arrows. Again, the arrows would indicate that it's a line and that it goes on forever. But line segment CD represents the same set of points as line segment DC. So it doesn't matter whether I say the, the points from left to right or from right to left. It makes no difference. It represents the same points. The fourth term that we're going to be looking at is array. Array is a portion of a line with only one endpoint and it extends infinitely in only one direction. So I'm going to go ahead and draw an example of a ray. And I'm going to put three letters or three points on this ray. And I'm going to use the letters X, Y, Z. So notice how there's one start point, which would be Z. And it extends infinitely in the direction of Y or in the direction of X, however you choose to see it. Now when you name a ray, you're going to use two letters, just like the line or the line segment. But the first letter has to be the start point. So where does this ray start? Well, it starts at Z. So I can call this ray ZY, starting at Z and goes in the direction of Y forever. And again, there's a special symbol used, and that's the little ray symbol above. Or if you wanted to, you could call this ray ZX, starts at Z and goes in the direction of X forever. Now the ray symbol, the little ray symbol that I've drawn above each notation here, always goes towards the right, even though the ray over here goes towards the left. You're never going to switch that. So 
uh, some students might say, oh, this is ray z x, starting at z and going the direction of x this way, but you're never going to see that. So this would be bad. So I'm going to put like a, a no smoking, no drawing ray symbol like that. Bad. So our last definition was for a ray, and now we're going to be discussing an angle. An angle is the union of two rays that share a common endpoint called the vertex. I'm going to go ahead and draw a couple of examples of angles. Okay, so I've drawn two examples of angles, one in red and one in green. So let's take a look at the one in red. The angle that's drawn in red is made up of two rays. The first ray is ray OF, and the second ray is OX. And the point that they share, the endpoint, is called the vertex, which would be point O. Now the two rays in the context of this angle are known as the sides. So OF is a side, and ray OX is a side. Now when I name this angle, I can name it with this little symbol here, this little notation, angle FOX, or I could call it angle XOF. You'll notice in either case, though, that the middle letter is the vertex, O. So you couldn't name this something like angle OFX. That would mean something completely different. So when you're using the three letters to name your angle, the middle letter must be the vertex. Now a couple more things I want to say about this first angle. I've seen some books use this alternate notation of putting a slash through the angle symbol. So I just want to show that to you in case you ever see it, you're not freaked out. So I could call this angle FOX or I could call this angle XOF. So if you ever see that the uh, angle symbol with that slash through it, that's fine. Now the last thing that I want to say about this red angle. You could call this just angle O. Angle O would be perfectly acceptable. Now let's take a look at the green angle. Now when we look at this green angle, there's actually three angles going on here. There's angle CDF, the little angle on top. There's angle FDE, the little angle on the bottom. And then there's the whole big angle, angle CDE. So there's three angles going on here. But what I want you to focus on is the large angle, the angle that I've marked with that tick mark. So this is angle CDE. Let me actually mark, make that a little bit darker by bold, bolding it here. So that's the angle that I want you to focus on. So we call that angle CDE. You could go backwards and call it angle EDC. But remember, the middle letter has to be the vertex. So the middle letter that I'm picking is D. And notice D is the vertex, so that's good. Now, unlike the, the angle that's in red, I cannot call this angle D. The reason I can't call it angle D is if I said to you, hey, look at angle D, you wouldn't know if I'm referring to the little angle on the top, CDF, or the little angle on the bottom, FDE, or the whole big angle. So in this case, you have to use three letters you must say angle CDE or angle EDC. Our last term is triangle. A triangle is the union of three segments that all share endpoints. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture of a triangle and I'm going to put some points here to represent the endpoints of each of these segments and I'm going to call this triangle dog, D-O-G. Now when you're identifying a triangle, you use a little mini triangle symbol, and then you just write down the letters in any order. So I could say triangle DOG, I could say triangle DGO, I could say triangle ODG, I could say triangle OGD, I could say triangle GOD, or I could say the triangle GDO. So there are six ways that I could scramble these letters to appropriately name this triangle. Okay, one final thing that I want to say. I've seen this sometimes in books. Triangle A, uh, DOG is equal to line segment DO union line segment OG union line segment DG. 
That's basically describing what a triangle is using mathematical symbols. And I've seen some books discuss it like that. I'm going to go back and do the same thing for this angle up here. Angle FOX equals the union of ray OF joined together with ray OX. So here are our six very basic definitions. You probably knew a lot of this stuff already, but we really can't move forward unless we're all on the same page about what these six things are and how to properly notate them. They're going to be coming back again and again throughout the entire course. So make sure you know what these terms are and you know, feel free to rewatch the video or pause, rewind, and just make sure you have a handle on it. All right, over and out. And for a closing exercise, I've given you here six pictures illustrating the six basic terms that we just defined. So what I'd like you to do is stop the video and see if you can match which of the six basic geometric terms is best illustrated by each picture. So stop the video now. Okay, in number one, what I'm seeing here is an angle. And I'm going to show you where this angle is. I see the hand of the clock extending upward like that, and I see the other hand of the clock extending upward like this. And I'll put this little tick mark in the middle. So this is a representation of an angle, the hands of a clock. In number two, if you guessed line segment, you're correct. What I was going for here was, was the uh, actual balance beam itself. So here's one end of the balance beam, here's the other, and then here is the, um, the beam itself represented by this line segment. Number three, this is a ray. The water originates from the shower head and then from there it extends infinitely in this one direction. So to me this looks like a ray. And number four, here we have a line, or actually two lines, as illustrated by these railroad tracks. Now we know the tracks don't actually go on forever, but it's a nice representation of something that looks like a line. Number five would be a point. This tennis ball is a point. It's a location in space. It's a location on this tennis court. And then number six would be triangle. The upper portion of this window forms a nice triangle. So here are th six examples of where these basic geometric terms occur in everyday life.